Welcome to lecture six of this six lecture series on the foundations of DeepRL. Lecture six, so the, the final one, we already covered a lot. Um, we looked at the foundations of RL, starting with exact solution methods. Then we looked at Q learning, policy gradients, more advanced versions of policy gradients with TRPO and PPO. We looked at actor critic methods, DDPG and SAC. All of these methods that we've looked at so far fall under this category called model-free RL. Model-free reinforcement learning means that when your agent collects the data, it's going to use that data to directly learn a Q function and or a policy. Now, there's something else you can in principle do with the data. An agent use it to learn a model of the world, a dynamics model that allows me to simulate what the world is like. And when I have that world model, then maybe I can you know, use it to then find a good policy or a good Q function by using that world model. And by doing so, I can do a lot of learning without needing to collect new data in the real environment. And so that way, maybe you could be a lot more sample efficient is the thinking. And so that's what is model-based RL. It's where you use the data to learn a model and then use that model to learn a better policy or Q function. Typically, you have to go back and then collect more data and keep improving your model and so forth. And we'll see soon how it exactly looks. But that's what we're going to talk about in this lecture here. So we'll start with the kind of basic framework of model-based RL. Then I would say that model-based RL is maybe not as converged as model-free RL. And model-free RL, I would say it's kind of pretty clear that the methods of choice these days tend to be either SAC or DDPG or TD3, which is very related to those two, or PPO for a more pure policy grain method or something like rainbow DQN for a DQN style method. In model-based RL, it's still pretty open-ended. There's a lot of variants at play, so can't enumerate all of them. I'm going to give you two variants that are exemplary of the kind of things people are thinking about as they think about improving upon the standard model-based RL approach, but I would say there's still a lot in flux in how people do model-based RL. So what is vanilla model-based RL? You iterate. Your agent collects data under the current policy. Then it learns a dynamics model from past data. Some people call it a world model. Um, I usually call it a dynamics model. And then you improve the policy by using this dynamics model, maybe by backpack through time, through the learned model and the policy and the rewards, or by using the learned model as a simulator. And then you can run model-free RL inside the learned simulator. Both are fine. And so once you've done that, you might say, are we done? Actually, we're not. We need to iterate because if we just optimize the policy in the simulator, it's going to be really good at doing well in that learned dynamics model. But that dynamics model is probably not perfect because it's learned from a limited amount of data collected under the initial policy. And so the initial policy might not get that interesting data, actually. And so now your new policy might be exploiting some things, might be not as good as you hoped for. You put it in the real environment, collect more data, and repeat. And so you go around this loop many, many times, every time updating your dynamics model, updating your policy, and repeat. OK, so why model-based RL? You might anticipate data efficiency, indeed. You get a model out of data, which might allow for more significant policy updates than just a policy grant or where you get in a Q function, though Q functions can extract a lot too, very close to model-based methods in some ways. And by learning a model, what you learn could be reusable for other tasks. It's not specific to the reward you're learning with. If later somebody has a different reward, you can still use your model and um, optimize this new reward in your model. So again, here's the algorithm. Iterate, collect data on the current policy, learn dynamics model from past data, improve policy by using dynamics model, and repeat. So again, anticipated benefit, sample efficiency. But so why is it not used all the time? When you look at RL papers, actually model-based RL is, let's say, one of the least frequently used among RL approaches. Why is that? Well, I think part of it is that Actually, it's not as mature yet as it could be, and there's more work to be done. Another reason could be that if you have access to a simulator, 
why run things in a learn simulator if you have a simulator anyway? Like why learn a simulator for Atari if you have the Atari simulator right there? Or why learn a simulator for simulated robots? You already have the simulated robots. But there are some more subtle reasons beyond the fact that maybe when you have access to a simulator that it's, it's not the natural approach to use. Training and stability is one. And we'll look at one approach that can address some of this. There are other approaches out there, but I just want to give you a flavor of what's possible. And often not achieving the same asymptotic performance as model-free methods. And I'll give you a flavor of one method that is resolving that. So let's start with the robustifying, and then we'll look at the adaptive model-based RL. So robust model-based RL through model ensemble TRPO. Now, this with TRPO because TRPO was state-of-the-art method when this was developed. If somebody were to redo this today, they would probably do model ensemble PPO rather than model ensemble TRPO, but all the ideas are, are the same. So we need to first understand overfitting that happens in model-based RL. Standard overfitting that you have in supervised learning, your neural network performs well on the training data, but poorly on test data. And this could be happening in model-based RL too. If you learn a dynamics model, then you could overfit and learn a dynamics model that's overfit. So you need to avoid that. And let's avoid that. We can regularize, we can have a holdout data and so forth to avoid overfitting. But there's something else. There's a new kind of overfitting that pops up in model-based RL. And this new type of overfitting is as follows. Your policy optimization step tends to exploit regions where insufficient data is available to train the model. And this leads to catastrophic failures. It's called model bias. And the proposed fix here is gonna be model ensemble trust region policy optimization. So to give this a bit more color, you have your learned simulator and you're optimizing your policy. And some regions the learned simulator is accurate. Other regions it's not so accurate. Among the regions where it's not accurate, for some of them, it'll think you can get very high reward, even though in the real world you cannot, but the inaccurate simulator thinks you can get very high reward. And so if you optimize your policy in that simulator, you'll be overfitting to your simulator, which is guiding you to parts of space where things are not good because it's inaccurate. And so that's the kind of overfitting we're worried about here, and that's referred to by model bias. The learned dynamics model has some kind of biases that you overfit to that you want to avoid. So let's compare vanilla model-based RL top here with model ensemble trust region policy optimization. So the red block is where things are different. Collect samples, sure. Train all models. So we have an ensemble of dynamics models here, or world models, some people like to call it. Then we repeat, you collect fictitious samples from these different models from the ensemble. And then you update the policy using TRPO or PPO, or maybe SAC or DDPG. And then you estimate the performances and you keep doing this until you stop improving. And so what's interesting about this is that as you estimate performances, you'll estimate performance across multiple members of the ensemble. And as you train an ensemble of dynamics models, what happens is wherever there's enough data to support an accurate model, these models will typically agree. But when there's not enough data to support an accurate model, because these models are initialized differently, they will make different predictions because there's been no data to say what should be predicted there. They will disagree. And thanks to that disagreement, you will know that you're outside of the region where the simulator is precise, and that's being leveraged here to then say, we need to collect new data, improve our ensemble models, and keep repeating. Once you do this, you can actually get a very robust model-based RL algorithm. And so we evaluated this actually some of our own work across a range of simulated robotic environments. And you look at the learning curves. In green is the approach I described. It's consistently shooting up quickly and very robust, very low variance on these curves. Whereas compare this here with other methods, let's say model-free methods, PPO, TRPO, DDPG, they're a lot slower. And this is on a logarithmic scale, so there's actually a factor of 10 to 100 difference in sample efficiency, even more on some of them. Here we have a very robust way of doing model-based RL. Now, we did some ablations in that work. We can compare backpropagation through time 
with standard policy gradients with TRPO in green. And we see that TRPO in green and is always among the best in all three environments. And there's some variance between the other two, how well they do. Backpropagation through time struggles a bit more, has higher variance. Why might that be? Well, when you backpropagate through time, computing your gradients through the learned dynamics model, it just might introduce more variance because that's a learned dynamics model than we have with repeated rollouts against the dynamics model, which doesn't uh, need accurate derivatives of the dynamics model, only expects accurate or reasonably accurate rollouts. We also bladed the number of members in the ensemble. One member, of course, is having not really an ensemble, just one model that's in green that doesn't do that well. But once you have five members, it does quite well. These plots suggest that 10 is probably enough for these types of environments. Okay, so we now have a way to robustify model-based RL by learning an ensemble of models and making sure that we don't get this kind of over-optimization against the one specific model, but only optimize against the ensemble as a whole, by which we essentially optimize the policy against things that the data supports in our learned simulator, as opposed to potentially overfit works in the learned simulator. But can we do more? We learned something very robust here that works across a range of simulators, but the real world is not a range of simulator, it's one specific thing. As you could wonder, can we learn something that is adaptive, that can quickly adapt to the real world rather than something that is robust and maybe conservative as a consequence. So here's again, model-based RL, we said resolve training instability, but what about the asymptotic performance? By being conservative, we might give up some asymptotic performance. So can we add some adaptiveness to all of this? One fix could be just learn a better dynamics model, but the problem with that is that it's very hard to learn really good dynamics model. Another way to do it would be to say, do model-based RL, via meta policy optimization. We haven't really covered that in this six lecture series, but what it means is to learn a policy that is very good at adapting quickly to a new environment that's related to the environment it's trained in. So you learn an ensemble of models still, but instead of trying to learn a single policy that works well across all of them, you try to learn a adaptive policy. When you're deployed in any one of the models, you can adapt very quickly. And then hopefully you can also quickly adapt to the real world. Here's a pseudocode for that. You can look at that uh, a little more slowly on your own time. But key here is that when we essentially, we again train an ensemble of models. And then for all models, we're gonna be sampling trajectories. Each model generates their own trajectories. We have this single policy pi theta. And we see if that policy pi theta with a one policy gradient step can do well on all these different learned models. And if it can, that's a good policy pi theta can also probably adapt quickly in the real world. And then we optimize theta to achieve such a policy. Um, we evaluated this actually across a range of simulated environments and we actually get really, really good performance. On the left is the model-based meta policy optimization. On the right is model free. Model free, we know is gonna be less sample efficient and we see the evidence here after 20 minutes of experience, model free is still kind of the very initial struggles of learning a policy, whereas the model-based meta policy optimization approach is already having the cheetah run uh, quite well. And then let's see, similarly for Walker on the left and the ant on the right, we're comparing MBMPO with PPO. The model-based approach is way more sample efficient after less than an hour of experience already doing well, whereas PPO is still in the early stages of learning. All right, so here are some learning curves showing the performance going up more quickly is better. The red curve is says hours, which is the MBMPO model-based meta policy optimization. And the other curves are model-free approaches and we see it learns 10 to 100 times faster, and actually achieves the same asymptotic performance. This paper was the first one to show that with model-based methods, we can truly achieve the same level of performance as model-free by using this adaptive learning approach. And then comparing with state-of-the-art model-based methods, we see it outperforms the model ensemble TRPO, which we saw before, which is in blue, and also outperforms the model predictive control method in purple. And 
actually we're able to test this on real robots because it is model based it's very sample efficient it's able to get very good performance also and we see on the left here ppo learn to block stack oh sorry on the right ppo and on the left the model based meta policy optimization approach and in about you know, 10 20 minutes it can learn to stack that block which is very very fast and so we see that this is a very effective method even including capable of learning with real robots so a quick summary of this lecture which is also our final lecture we covered the basics of model-based rl as i mentioned model-based rl is less converged i would say than model free rl maybe more opportunities for research is what it means but also more kind of uncertainty what is the necessarily the exact go-to algorithm when you're going to run some model-based rl i'll give you two examples of some pretty good choices metrpo and mbmpo metrpo uses an ensemble of learned models to be more robust both during learning and in terms of final policy mbmpo uses an ensemble of models to learn to be adaptive and it's the first one to achieve asymptotic performance with model-based rl that matches the asymptotic performance of the model free methods in these simulated robotics environments so taking a step back what did we cover we looked at reinforcement learning the very basics what are mdps and what are some exact solution methods we covered value iteration policy iteration we covered the max end formulation of mdps we also realized that you know those tabular approaches the exact value iteration exact policy iteration can only work for small mdps so if we want to solve more interesting things we need approximate methods we saw a range of approximate methods that can do quite well actually deep q learning is a off policy method that was behind the big breakthrough on atari in 2013. policy gradients advantage estimation trpo ppo were behind many of the breakthroughs in reinforcement learning for robotic control including vision-based robotic control ddpg and soft actor critic made that more efficient they can do some off policy learning be a bit more data efficient you might still want the more pure policy grade methods because they are simpler and if you have fast simulation where the data collection is not the bottleneck but the neural network updates are the bottleneck then maybe you don't care about reusing old data all that much and then we saw model based rl which generally is expected to be maximally sample efficient but there's many more components to it and is a little less converged as a whole but the general principle is pretty clear you collect data you learn a model train a policy against that model that policy will be overfit to the model you learned you don't want to train it for too long you go use that policy to collect more data learn a better model and repeat okay that's it for this series hope you're able to learn uh, a lot about the foundations of deep rl from this and good luck with your own uh, work and research on this thanks <laughs>